tough. Um, we've, Lou and I have been friends for 30 years, going back to when we were uh, co-trustees of the Rural Education Center. It was the little organic farming school from which Stonyfield was, was spawned. And when we had some serious early discussions about selling yogurt as a source of income for our struggling nonprofit, I would usually look to Lou of all the trustees, for I knew he, he would not reject this totally ridiculous idea out of hand. And it didn't matter that then the, the then dean of uh, Antioch, New England, uh, knew exactly nothing about yogurt. Um, he was just playing game for a completely new way of thinking about an old problem, which is the way we have all come to know and love this man. Um, when we launched, and we had a wonderful little startup company, although the only two problems were we had no supply and no demand, just minor details. Um, I could always count on Lou, nevertheless, to be nonplussed and supportive, whether sending me articles. How many have received little articles from Lou here? Right? Yes, exactly. Uh, or other encouraging missives. And over the decades since, whenever I've been thinking about some really pesky problem or some totally nutty and ridiculous solution, uh, it's become second nature for me to turn to Lou early on. And after he patiently allows me to fill his ears with my latest scheme and following a pregnant and respectful pause, tilted back in his chair, fingers to his chin, with a comforting smirk melting into a full grin, framed by twinkling bright and encouraging eyes, my reliable can-do comrade utters those beautiful words that bring oxygen, energy, and power. Why not? So here's to you, fellow dreamer, optimist, and enabler of the impossible. I'm forever grateful. New Hampshire's forever grateful for your thoughtful, free-thinking encouragement. Thank you, Lou. Lou enjoys a good argument, and so do I. With Lou, it's hard to know if you're making any progress, though, because he's always got one more tough question to ask to challenge you. And just when you've decided that he really hates your idea, he comes out with a laugh and a suggestion to make it better. And you come away all stirred up, but you, you have a clearer idea of what you're talking about and how to make a proposal. Lou, you've been a good steward and a good guide, and all of our successes are your successes. The New Hampshire Community Loan Fund has received several national awards for innovation and social impact for helping low-income people be more economically self-reliant. Every single one of those started with a seed grant out of the foundation, all built on some wild idea that you stretched yourself to receive, but only after a good argument. So I want to thank you, Lou. Thank you for everything you've done for the New Hampshire Community Loan Fund and for all the other nonprofit leaders who you've argued into a better proposal for better results for communities in New Hampshire. Thanks, Lou. Lou, I'm surprised you're still here. Um, John Wayne and Lou Feldstein, you know the story, right? Lou worked for John Wayne on John Wayne's yacht, which was a converted minesweeper from the Aleutian campaign of World War II. I'm trying to get my head around Lou Feldstein on a minesweeper. <laughs> but he got hired on board and almost as quickly almost talked his way out of the job again when he used such specific nautical terms as I think it's downstairs, or maybe it's in the back of the boat. <laughs> it was John Wayne who intervened and spared Lou's life, which you would figure because John Wayne was a conservative and therefore broad-minded. <laughs> Lou became the wine steward. The Duke would say, hey, young fella, fill me up here. And Lou would say, yeah, Duke, uh, would you like port or starboard? <laughs> <coughs> This was actually Lou's first attempt at being charitable. He would humor the Duke as the Duke would go off on some right-wing rant. All the while, he's smiling and nodding, and he's making notes for John Lindsay. <laughs> I don't want to say Lou is tireless, because the last time I saw Lou, he was sound asleep at an NPR event. <laughs> Wait, isn't that redundant? Dick Obert told me to keep this light, <laughs> so I will say I am glad that Lou got off the boat and came to New Hampshire. He's lit a lot of our lives. God bless. <laughs>